Uh, we'll have a full padded practice on 13, and then we have 14 where we're back into uh, just helmets and jerseys, clean some stuff up, get ready for the uh, for the off season or summer uh, time for those guys, and then 15 on Saturday. Uh, once again, due to our situation we have at the defensive line, uh, we're just going to practice um, probably the least amount of scrimmage that uh, I have done in my time as a head coach from a spring ball session, simply because uh, I think the other day we were down to three uh, defensive linemen, and then um, we lost Stang, who was helping us out, and um, Nelson Pipes was one of the three, and he's a long snapper, and Pipes is doing a heck of a job. So it's just been hard, and every time we have a drill, offense versus defense, we have to supplement that with the special teams for five or six minutes to get those three kids a breath, um, and they go hang out on the side. And so we probably will get one guy back tomorrow and Saturday to maybe get us up to four or five, but I think the max we've had is five, and you can't you can't function as a normal practice. And so hope we're getting a lot better at special teams, and that was the emphasis um, during a team period. Uh, myself and another coach are down there doing special teams drills with everybody from old guys to young guys, uh, emphasizing an awful lot of things, do a lot of full group punt versus punt return, kick versus kick return, not to the ground, but just full speed. Uh, that's an area that we know we need to improve upon. Even though we've been good, we, we want to be great. And so uh, we feel good that we're getting better there. Uh, and then uh, we'll finish up here and uh, have those three days, and then uh, coaches will be on the road, and guys will uh, finish up the semester. With how abbreviated that it has been, is there any fear that you're maybe not or losing something that you normally get out of spring? No, we did. You know, you, you always are conscious that are you getting that, but with the amount of uh, skill kids that we have returning, uh, we're getting all of our seven on seven work. We're getting there's. For the most part, all but two guys, wide receiver, running back, quarterback, defensive back, linebacker, are doing some things. The only area that really isn't is, is defensive line. I know that Coach Riley's a little bit concerned that we're not blocking Eli and we're not blocking Felix and Nate and Pickle and D. Hintz and all these guys. Um, so that's the area that's not getting it. But all those kids have played enough on defense. And then I know Cooper Beebe and I know Duff and those guys are, are – Wishing those guys were out there just from a competition standpoint, but uh, I think we'll be able to get that back in August. How close were you to getting to know what your interior of your offensive line will look like come fall? Um, we won't know till the fall. I mean, you can say a, a young man's getting better at being assignment sound and, and getting better with technique and those things, but uh, we want to make sure we get through the fall where they're blocking pick and Eli and, and, and D. Um, you know, we've played BB Moore inside. Um, we've been impressed with Andrew Line Gang outside. He's been nicked up a little bit, but Taylor Portier is not taking any of those snaps at all. So it's still a work in progress. We know the guys that we're working with, but we, we, we have a long ways to go once we get to fall camp. How comfortable are you with the backfield beyond Deuce? Uh, getting better, but uh, constant competi competition. Everybody will have a day here and there, uh, whether it's Shippers or whether it's uh, DJ and Jax, and, and we've even put Seth Porter back there uh, a little bit. Uh, we were really excited about Devon Withers, and he's missed all of spring with an injury that happened during bull prep. So it, that'll be a work in progress throughout fall camp. How much more do you think you'll get into the transfer portal now that spring's over? Well, no more by the end of April after all of our meetings go because once we get done with spring ball, the coaches will meet with the players individually, and then uh, I'll meet with players throughout the rest of the month of April to see where we're at. But uh, we have a few available. Um, you know, there's some position things that we're still looking at to see where we can maybe move a guy around internally on our roster. But we have a few that we're probably going to use, yes. And you kind of touched on this, but um, the circumstances around which you're having to operate this spring, is it forcing you into some areas that maybe would have gotten ignored if you could just go full scrimmage? Oh, absolutely. Spring? Yeah. Um, just getting better at technique things on special teams, which we always work special teams, but 
I mean, we're, we're sustained 15, 20 minutes on drills rather than five minutes go to the next thing, five minutes go to the next thing. We would be a group doing team stuff and everybody else down with myself and Coach Wyatt for this, this 15, 20 minutes and working the details of all these drills. And then we go when we go full group, uh, punt and punt return, kickoff, kickoff return, we're seeing some of the, the drill work carry over into the 11 on 11 setting. So uh, I'm really hopeful that uh, the reps these guys are getting is going to pay off. And spring football games were always kind of a cool tradition of, yeah. of football through the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Do you feel like it, more programs are just kind of moving away from that whole idea? Yeah, I think they are. It, it, it was always neat back in the day uh, having a big spring game to finish it off. I was a part of 20 practices, so you're really glad when it was done and you had a spring game. Yeah, just I don't think people's roster sizes are big enough right now to do it. You know, there's some kids mid-year enrollees, so you get a few of those guys. But you know, with the revolving door of of uh, roster management, you know, we I think we have 98 guys on our roster right now. I would think 30 of those aren't practicing because of some kind of uh, condition or or surgery or something. So you can't do much with 60 guys, and you. It's great. We've got a bunch of wideouts, but we don't have a bunch of defensive linemen, so you can't scrimmage. So I think it is probably. And everybody, we've got to be smart. We're trying to get everybody to the summer and everybody to the fall because you're, you know, you're you going to win and lose a spring game no matter what. You know, you're know, you going to be a winning side and a, and a losing side. I want to make sure that we get everybody to August uh, as healthy as we can get. And finally, last one for me. Um, we're all trying to wrestle with the NIL and figure out what the hell it means, how it impacts us. But as a head coach, is there a concern level that stuff impacting your recruiting might be going on out there that's kind of beyond your grasp or control? Yeah, control what you can control there, Fitz. And I, I don't know what's going on. I'm learning more and more about things. You read about things. I don't know how accurate they are. You guys don't know how accurate they are. I know it is more prevalent right now than it was last year at this time. And how that impacts the kids that are in the portal, how that impacts the the classes classes over the next few years that are coming in, and how that impacts your current team. We're all trying to get our arms around that. But um, you know, until we can get some legislation and try to corral it, which I don't think is going to happen, I think it, it's going to continue to be what it is. And nobody knows, and all of a sudden, um, uh, you know, when will people know uh, your guess is as good as mine? Because wide receiver does seem to be a position where you could actually see him practice every day and didn't have a bunch of injuries. How would you assess that unit and who stood out to you this spring? RJ Garcia is the one that stood out the most to me. And I always thought he was a, a really talented player, um, but was young learning the offense last year as a true freshman. Um, you know, Coach Wards has him playing fast and understanding what he's doing and really attacking footballs in the air. So you can look at the guys like Philip, Malik, Cade that have played a ton of snaps for us, uh, playing really, really well. And you look at RJ continuing to improve and a guy that's getting into the mix for sure. Um, uh, I think Sebastian's healthier and doing some things that uh, that can help us. Um, Xavier Lloyd's doing some really nice things. Ty Bowman's doing some really nice things. There's, you can go down the line. Shane Porter, Seth Porter, all those guys. We're we're getting a lot of guys involved, um, but uh, RJ would be the one that has been the the most uh, impressive to me. And with uh, Adrian, what all did he do this spring to help you? Even though he's not throwing, and when would you expect him to, you know, start throwing with the guys privately again? Uh, I would say in May it would be my guess. Um, when I'm talking in May, their own seven on sevens, their own things that they're doing. I've seen him throw, um, and he's his progression of throwing on a daily basis, weekly basis has continued to amp up. Um, I walked by my office and he was out there throwing with the athletic trainers, uh, throwing 40 and 50 yard balls. So um, I think we're really progressing there. But I don't know if, how quickly that's going to be. People surrounding me, let's go. Um, it will be for sure in August. I'm hopeful that it is for him throughout their summer stuff with the guys. But ask what he's done. He does a lot of the run game stuff. That's when you guys see him out there in pads. 
is it's a run play. He's on an end with Will, and he's going through everything as if it's a play except for if it's a pass. So he's running um, a lot of the quarterback run stuff to us to just under center, turning and giving back on power and, and some of our other gap scheme stuff. So he's learning a bunch on the run, and uh, we've had a lot of walkthroughs, and we're going to have a few more these next few days, not just for him, but for Taylor Poitier, for Sincere Mason, for Will Honus, for uh, Devon Withers, for all the guys that can't practice so that we can simulate as best we can. Another unusual circumstances this spring, but say next spring you guys are healthy again, would you like to get back to doing some type of event with fans showing up in the spring? It would be great. Uh, and, and even if that is you know, cut down to – we're going to practice for 45 minutes and have a, a younger guy's scrimmage for 30 minutes. You know, that would be neat. We just can't even do that right now. How would you describe Cooper Beebe's acclimation to move inside, given that he has moved around a lot? Uh, I think it's good for him. I think it, it's going to help him uh, in the long term learn more about our offense, be able to help more guys, especially the younger guys, um, you know, we like to have him at the point of attack. You're much more at the point of attack inside uh, than sometimes you are outside unless you're just going right at that left side. So I think he's done a nice job of, of challenging himself to get out of his comfort zone to learn more and more uh, about what we do. And uh, he's a really good communicator on the offensive line. And, and you get an interior guy, obviously Noah, everybody knows was such a great communicator inside out. Now you get a guy like him. I think Gilly's done a really good job, Hayden Gillum, of being a really good communicator. Hadley pans are the same way. And given your limitations, how would you oh, describe your, your defensive depth uh, it's, as it kind of flowed through the spring? Um, not real deep right now. I mean, that's something, you know, we. We know Khalid's going to play. You know, we all know that Khalid's a good enough football player. Is he going to help us more at defensive end? Is he going to help us more at Sam Backer? Um, you know, Sean Robinson, is he going to help us uh, as an outside backer, as a safety? We're playing him in both spots. Uh, Kobe Savage, another new kid, is he going to help us at the at the strong side safety, at the weak side safety? Uh, so we're we're the depth is a work in progress. Um, simply because we're moving some guys around to try to make sure we either get the best 11 or the best 15 or 16 guys out there. Depth has changed, obviously. A little bit of linebacker in the last couple of days. Is anybody step up this spring at linebacker to help out with the depth? Uh, I think Crew Jackson's had a really good spring. We just got to keep weight on, on Crew. Um, he gets taller every day. Uh, but, you know, just trying to keep – I mean, he's all a 6'6". Six, six. It's just trying to keep weight on him as he continues to grow. He's got uh, tremendous length. He's a physical kid. He's a smart player. Uh, and uh, he's going to help us next year. He's playing some Sam Backer. He's playing a ton of special teams. He's one that has stood out to me. Um, you know, you can tell when Daniel Green's on the field because – whether he's got older defensive linemen, younger defensive linemen, he's making plays all over the place. Uh, Austin Moore, who's been nicked up most of the spring, has been healthy the last five or six practices. He's playing really well. I'm excited about uh, about what Austin's going to be able to do. And then, you know, we don't have Nick right now. Nick Allen would be a guy. Um, Will Honus, we don't have Will. We think Will's in the mix there too. So um, it'll be a big summer for those guys that have been injured to do some stuff on their own. What is the gap right now between – Will Howard and Jake Rubley? Um, Experience-wise, uh, Will is ahead of Jake as far as figuring things out, I think, cerebrally and, and uh, what he checks at the line of scrimmage and how he sees things. He just played more football. Um, and uh, Jake is is doing so much better of, of having those tough situations of we're looking like we're blitzing this way and all of a sudden we're coming this way, or the covers look like it's rotating weak and it's rotating strong. It just takes a, it takes a while to do that. And when we don't have double reps because we're doing special teams on another end now, you know, all those quarterbacks are taking reps, so you're not getting quite as many as we would like. And so um, in, in fall camp, we've got to make sure and continue to push Jake so that he feels more and more comfortable. But he's, uh, he's improved so much from fall to spring. And my last question is, you, you brought a white helmet in here. We've seen the white uniforms before. But I've, I've talked about a lot on my show about a black uniform. We've seen it in basketball, 
Has there been any discussions, any possibilities maybe? Yeah, uniforms? not that I know of, honestly, not that I know of. Um, and uh, part of that is us getting out to Nike sometime. And uh, it's been tough to get out there with pandemic things. Um, and, you know, that stuff takes time. My, my, my brother's in the, the uniform business and uh, um, talking to him on a daily basis about trying to get product out um, with supply chain stuff. It's, uh, I would be nervous about purchasing something and thinking that's going to get to where it's supposed to be uh, in time. Uh, but um, something that uh, uh, we will continue to, to talk about, uh, but uh, probably not uh, in the near, near future. Uh, back to linebackers, you uh, lost a little bit of depth there at, at the Willbacker yep. this week. Uh, have you moved some guys around or what is what does that side look like um it's been uh, austin moore who is really uh the guy that's taken most of the reps and um you know we do some seven on seven will honus can do that which is good um you know khalid can play a little bit of that during seven on seven you know but it's it's like every other position until we get a lot of these guys back um from injuries um we're still trying to to build depth and um so it is what it is what's the value of malik as far as being an all-purpose player well we need to continue to find ways to get him the football and i think you guys saw that in the uh in the bowl game of whether it's on a jet sweep to uh, a quick little bubble or smoke screen to uh, crossing routes to vertical routes as well as in the return game um, it, he's really valuable, uh, and we've got to continue to find ways to get him the ball. What I'm excited about Malik is uh, I think he'll be a guy that we'll use on punt and kickoff. And um, uh, he and I have had some good conversations. I've got him in some drill work uh, on some tackling stuff and, and coverage things. It's going to help him for what his true aspirations are beyond college. And... Um, uh, I'm excited because he is he's bright eyed to say, hey, let me help on these things. And we need that. We need the Dalton Shones that were on everything. Uh, and, and Malik can be one of those guys. And, uh, Sammy Wheeler, I think we're going to talk to him for the first time today. He's a Lenexa guy. He converted quarterback yep. to tight end, put on 20 pounds. What's he meant to you? Leadership and taking ownership after we lost. Uh, you know, Barta and Nick Lenners this past year, you know, he's the old guy in the room uh, and uh, love what he's done, uh, not only on the field, but in the locker room, in the weight room, uh, around the younger guys, helping those guys. Um, he's, he's had tough times. He's had injuries, um, and he's had success on the field. And Sammy's a terrific football player, and now it's his time to – share his knowledge with an awful lot of young guys because we have some young tight ends in that room uh, that are, I think, going to be really good, and they need to hear that it's not always going to be easy. And Sammy would be the first one to tell you it's not easy, uh, but uh, we're excited, and I think Sammy will be a big part of the offense. Another question I had on Malik that I forgot about. I apologize. Um, the the Klein offense, we, we saw it in the bowl game, as you said. How do you feel like that might cater toward his talents? Well, it's going to cater toward a lot of guys' talents in the fact of if they're going to take away Malik with, with two guys, we're going to be able to spread the ball around uh, to a lot of different people. If they want to pack everybody in and try to defend Deuce, then we have multiple receivers outside. So uh, just the fact that uh, um, it's a little bit more up-tempo and it's a little bit faster and um, the fact that we're getting the ball downfield as well as spreading it uh, horizontally as well, I think that's going to uh, fit his game. This is the the second spring that Will's kind of been able to operate as 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 the number one quarterback. How how have you seen his progression, especially this past spring? Uh, confidence, accuracy, and arm strength are the three things. Uh, Will has always been very very sharp and understands what what we're doing and is a really coachable guy and uh, has a ton of pride and uh, so pleased with the progress that Will has made and uh, excited to see where that progress can go once we get into uh, competitive environments because he has done some things mechanically 
uh, to help accuracy and arm strength. And as long as he continues to work on those things, which I know he will, because very few people will outwork uh, Will Howard uh, on our football team. The kid's going to be a really, really good player. And he's he knows he's um, in a position now where, yeah, we've got competition for him. And he thrives on that. He's not, why are you bringing somebody in? I, I'm thriving on it. I'm just going to make me better. Uh, and so I've just seen him grow so much as a person uh, as well as a player. But the confidence that he's playing with and those kids in that locker room believe in him. And, you know, right now he's, he's running a um, – a deal over at the Union Force right now on a Be the Match campaign, and and uh, uh, he got the teammate team involved with that, and you know that shows you he can galvanize a football team. And then it's been alluded to a couple times, but just because it's it's such a strange situation with him only being on campus for four months, can you go into the you know what what went down with with Brandon Jennings as far as his decision to yeah to leave just, the program? It just didn't work out, and um, uh, we wish him well. And that's kind of where I'll leave it at in the fact of, you know, it's we're going to focus on the guys that are here, but it just it didn't work out. And uh, we wish him nothing but the best. Chris, uh, in your last couple seasons, you didn't go the fastest tempo offense in the world. Now it seems like Colin wants to get you going that way, maybe not like Texas Tech, but faster. What was your reaction when he said that's what he wants to do, get things sped up a little bit more? Well, he and I had the conversation about it prior to the bowl game. And... Um, something that I wanted to do as well. And it's it's still you're going to win uh, collectively as a team. And Colin knows that, understands that, and believes that as well, that uh, just because you don't huddle doesn't mean you're going to snap it within 12 seconds and you're going to get run off 95 plays. Because on the other side of the ball, you're going to probably defend 93 plays and you're not going to last. And so it's just trying to – give some people a little bit different look, um, trying to utilize the matchups. And, and we really feel, and we wanted to utilize that against LSU, was the matchups that we have. It's difficult to defend Phillip. It's difficult to defend Malik. It's difficult to defend Deuce. You get all three of them out there, and you're going a little bit quicker. Guys like Cade make plays. Guys like Senate can make plays. Guys like Sammy can make plays. And all of a sudden, everybody gets involved um, and there's more opportunities when you're going to – maybe it's 70 plays rather than 57. Maybe it's one game 75 plays rather than 59. I mean, those are those are more opportunities for guys to have success. But I, I, Colin and I are on the same page. If, you know, if you're up 14 points, why are you going as fast as you can to try to see how quickly you can get the ball back to the other offense? Maybe you got to slow it down. But maybe you don't allow that defense to dial up every blitz in America because you come out of a huddle. And so – those are things, and yeah, we, we, we've huddled an awful lot this spring, and we'll continue to huddle some. But there's other times where we're not going to huddle. And uh, I think the guys have been really excited about some of the things that we can do um, once we get everybody here in the summer. I also want to ask, um, looking into the NFL draft, you've been as optimistic as anybody about Skyler's potential as an NFL quarterback. Now that you've actually seen him you know, in the Shrine game and Pro Day and everything, what is it – are you more bullish now, and what do you think makes him such a good player at the next level? Um, I haven't heard enough things other than the places that he has gone as far as having really good success at a couple of visits he went to and people coming and working him out, uh, how high people are on him. But I don't know where he's at as far as where other quarterbacks are. Um, Skyler will be uh, on a roster and have a great opportunity uh, to stick on a roster. I couldn't tell you where he's at as far as is he going to be a mid-round guy, a free agent guy. I can just know this, the kid's a winner. He's just a flat-out winner, and he's going to make everybody around him better. And even if he's not the guy, I know his experience of being hurt and helping Will Howard game plan and helping uh, Coach Klein and Coach Mess game plan and get things ready, he'll make a great addition to a quarterback room and doesn't mean you're going to take a ton of snaps. I mean, Easton Sticks going to hold a clipboard for maybe the fourth year in a row buying a kid like Justin Herbert. It's not a bad living. You mentioned Ben Sennett a moment ago. I was just curious as to maybe the progress that he's made from the bowl part of the season till now. Yeah. Ben's has as much ability as a tight end slash fullback as, 
as anybody that that we've coached in this in this system. And uh, um, his ability to be physical, his ability to run, his ability to catch the ball in space and get open um, is uh, is it's a tough matchup for people. And it's now just continuing to slow the game down for Ben and. Uh, he's got to work at it, and I think Coach Lepak's done a really good job with him as far as teaching him more of the details rather than rather than nothing but big picture things. Ben's got to break down the details, and if he breaks down the details of, you know, the proper footwork, the proper leverage to use, how to set people up um, physically, he's as gifted as anybody. I think he can be better as far as those details. A couple of little quick ones here too with with. Um the Will Howard scenario, that's impressive what you're talking about, how he embraces that. Do you use him as an example with maybe other positions of how he's embraced the competition? You know, I hope that the way Will carries himself, that other guys see it, rather than having to explain, hey, look what he's doing, because other guys potentially are in that same boat. But just the way he carries himself um, on and off the field, what he does in the community, what he does in the locker room, I think it sets the, the example that we want all of our guys to be able to emulate. What about the progress of like uh, Darrell and, and Omar from we saw them early last year and you could tell that they were yep. had a lot of potential? Yeah. Darrell is really, really fast, really good cover guy. We have to get him continuing to understand the whys of the zones and the leverage of different zones. Um, but He's made some a lot of really good plays just because he's a really good man coverage guy. Omar's interesting because he missed most of last season uh, with a, a wrist injury, came back for the bowl game as an emergency guy only, and then uh, as we've come through fall camp on – or excuse me, on spring ball, as far as defensive guys alone, he would be as a top or the top two or three of the most improved players. And – we're going to need him to be because right now he's the third corner with us moving Josh Hayes to safety.